This is Glasgow, Scotland. This is John. This is Omar. And this is No Code. How did you get from birth to No Code? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a story. We hung out as kids, went to school together, created a band together. We done, we done the band, I went off to work in games. You were teaching and doing lots of freelance audio stuff. We started doing game jams together. Those usually led to accidental releases that went well. So those um, games, uh, was the first one? Love versus Dub. It was the Starbucks pick of the week thing, which yeah. made it huge. And then we had Super Arc Light, which, which is our first official no code release. Which was an which, editor's choice. Which was editor's choice. And done well as well, that was with Channel 4. And that's, that's what allowed us to give up all the the day job. We done the House Abandon. Yeah. It went viral. That plus working with Devolver, meeting Devolver um, and working with them on Stories Untold while we were waiting for Observation to kind of get greenlit. How did you make friends with Devolver? Is it simply the fact that Devolver Graham is Scottish? Yeah, that was all, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we got introduced to Andrew from Devolver and then we ended up showing it to Graham. John McKellen, No Code's in-house street magician. Got a coin? Coin. Take that coin. Thank right. you. What I want you to do is put the coin right there. There. Just bounce it there, okay? Right, so that I can't move my hand. Okay. But I'm still going to get that coin, okay? I'm just gonna get All right. Coin. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it called no code? Because neither of us are coders. First game jam we done together was me, Graham, and Omar, uh, where we made Lovely Dub. But we just wanted to do a thing, the three of us, and say, oh, can a band make a game? You know, in that kind of silly way. And we did, and at the start, it was a friend of mine who said, who's your coder? And I was like, we don't have a coder. And he's like, you can't make a game of no code. And I was like, well, try. And then we won the BAFTA for it. And we're not saying that coders are bad. It's just that we started without one, and that was weird. We made Love V Dub, we made Super Arc Light, we made most of the stories untold, and then the observation demo without a programmer. So tell me a little bit about the No Code team makeup. Family's involved. Family, yeah. family business, definitely. My brother works here. My wife works here. My brother-in-law works here. Your mum works here. And then we actually recruited everyone else legitimately. Yeah, and then we're going to rename them so they're part yeah. of the family as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The team we've actually assembled have just been. It's just really came together and really clicked. Mm. This is the entire No Code team. We've got our sort of art and design department over here and then over the other side we've got our, our single programmer and QA uh, department. We've got Oliver who basically ties the whole thing together. You are the programmer. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't even be here. The code of is no this, code. Is this what, what happens when programmers write things down? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely impenetrable flowcharts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Where did the genesis of observation come from then? I had the idea of taking the concept of evil AI and saying, what would that be like from their perspective? Like when, when there's someone trapped behind the door and the AI have locked the door down, the person's going to die and the other one goes, damn you, open the door, and they don't open the door. Right, the AI is evil and you go, you bastard, and you're going to take down the computer. But from the computer's point of view, it's like, no, if I open that door, you're all going to die, so I'm going to let that person die. And they make these kind of weird moral choices that as humans we don't make. And I was like, well, what's that like? to put the player in that situation. Who did these concept arts up on the wall? Stefano. So he was one of the concept artists on Alien Isolation. The idea is this is an international low orbit space station that yeah. many different countries have contributed to. And A lot of the design is actually quite contemporary. We're using the ISS for a lot of the, um, for a lot of the source material. Owner's workshop manuals for pretty much everything related to space. Apollo 13, we've got Saturn V. It's the way that NASA would produce their art for uh, their space agency branding that's on the ship or on the equipment, we'd use the same like techniques that they would use. So yeah, these are actually really useful. Even some of the puzzles came out of some of the really? diagrams that are in these, yeah. These are very cool. Good reading, yeah. I'll be completely honest, before you mentioned it today, I didn't know that there was such a thing as the Scottish Bathers. Yeah. Where's uh, Frankie Boyle? Uh, one said it's, it's, it's like the, the equivalent of the animals having an Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true, surely. <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's the one for Stories Untold? Yeah, for that, that's for Stories Untold. Last year. Your fans of Alien had this imprinted on you from an early age. 
Or eight, the Alien franchise, I should yeah. say. And then you spent, what, four or five years working on Alien Isolation? Yeah, I think it was like four and a half years or something. Yeah. So that's clearly brought some kind of influence to observation. In terms of like what I did on that project, I kind of discovered my style of doing things, especially in UI. and learned a lot about old tech and how CRTs render to screens and, and all these kind of things and got fascinated by that. In terms of UI-driven games, mm. um, I kind of found my... I guess, I don't, I don't know how unique it is, but my style and the things that I like doing, the way that I like to animate and stuff like that. I mean, you look at Observations UI, you look at Aliens UI, you'll definitely see some similarities, but it's because they're made by the same person with the same style. But in this case, I get to make that the game, not just a layer on top. A friend of mine who worked on Alien, when we announced Observation, he saw it, he's like, ah, oh, see, so you finally got to make the UI the main attraction. He's like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did, yeah. I think it's fair to say that you have more influences from film than other games. I've seen the collection. Yeah, it's pretty epic. But yeah, just because of the the sort of the narrative nature, the style of the game that it is, it actually lends a lot to kind of either like sort of kind of quite cinematic either TV series or films, things like 2001, Gravity, yeah. stuff like that was actually a really great reference for, for this game. Module 9, hull contact points to adjacent modules read true. Good, we're still connected. The guy who does Sam, tell me about him. He, he was an alien as well, he was Samuel's Anthony Hill and he was just mind-blowing, he was just this incredible voice. When I started writing the character for Sam in Observation, it was his voice I was using in my head. It got to the point where it was like, well, who are we gonna cast for Sam? And it was just like, well, I might as well find out if Anthony's free to do it, and he was. So yeah, so he's, he's the voice of Sam, and it's just like a totally unique voice. So who plays Dr. Emma Fisher? Emma Fisher that's Kazia Burroughs, who was also a mocap actress on Alien. Maybe six, seven months ago or something like that, we were coming up to an internal kind of milestone. I was like, we need some dialogue for yeah, the stuff that's missing. Up. We still hadn't cast or finalised who was going to be Emma. And I messaged Kez on Facebook and, can you do some lines for us? It's just for a little demo thing we're doing. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. She'd done it and it was perfect. And I was like, okay, do you want to be Emma? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I have to say, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of me that's a bit disappointed that you went with English voices and not Scottish. There is a Scottish voice in there. Oh, d d spoiler. <laughs> That's all I'll say. There's a Scottish voice in there. It's quite familiar. Oh, really? Yeah. Someone close by? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know you're all afraid of what is happening to the station. To us. Captain. So, this is basically like the mocap head rig that Chris made. We, we repurposed like a, a Gear VR. Um, VR headset. So this is all 3D printed? So yeah, it's all Here, 3D right? printed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so basically, we, it's like putting this on back to front. Okay. So we've got like the camera in there and we had uh, Kez up like uh, doing all our mocap and all the dialogue and stuff like that. But, so all the, all the facial capture was done with this then? Yeah, yeah. So everything was done with this. That's so yeah. DIY. Yeah. Normally you like see people in fancy studios with all the kit and... What is this? So this is a this is a 20-year-old football that we actually used during the mocap to signify Sam when you actually get into the one of the, the little drone spheres that you get to fly around the station. Okay. Oh, you go! Because you flipped everything around with this and put the player in the role of, of the evil or good AI, TBC, how did you design the puzzles so that they would be fun because that hasn't really been done from that point of view before. It's a weird game to make for sure. Everything we're doing we're trying to keep your perspective in mind and make sure like how you interact with things and, and th the methods in which you control the game feel right. Now we have you know what we call the system link system where all the functionality in a room is accessible via one area so you can add things to that list by looking around and finding them but to interact with them, it's kind of like you've got this master list of everything that's in that room, and so you have to think about these rooms as part of you rather than a place you're in. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's driven a lot of the the gameplay. And when you're fixing something, you're fixing yourself. 
uh, when someone is moving around, they're moving around inside you, and you have to kind of think of things that way in a kind of weird way. Yeah, this is all our history condensed into one look. We're going to sample some of the isolation and desolation that has fed into the creative concept of observation. You could see that. Not in space, in the hills of Glasgow. Road trip. Never have passed it in a wrap before. Great driving, Dad. Look at this man, making me feel cold. Just like everyone. One of the best things about Scotland is that it's got fantastic scenery. Do you like getting away from people as well? Yeah. Yeah? Because <laughs> your game is about getting away from people as well. It's yeah. almost antisocial. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's good. it's good just to clear your head. You're going for a sense of uneasiness, but mm. you don't really call it a horror game, you're calling it more of a thriller game. Yeah, we don't want to miss, kind of communicate what it is. It's hard because it's a little bit of an odd game in terms of what it's trying to do and the stories that I write tend to be a bit bizarre. I don't think horror and being the environment go together that well. Like, you have control over this entire station, so you're the powerful one compared to Emma. If you were playing the game as Emma, it'd be a horror game, absolutely, because you've got this AI and these weird things happening around the station. But because you're in control of everything, it feels wrong for it to be a horror and it's more of a thriller and that there's a sense of unease and there's a sense of, like, mystery about the whole thing. So it's Glasgow, it's Monday night, so it means we have to go to the pub. Yeah! Where are we going, Ben? Uh, we're going to Drummond Monkey in Glasgow. Why? Uh, because there's cheap booze and it's pretty big and nice and quiet, you can film. Good enough for me.